How you doing? This is Zach Allen. We're going to take a deep dive into ground mechanics today, or ground force mechanics. Um, the better we can understand how to use the ground and to get the most ground reaction force out of the ground, the farther we're going to hit the ball, but also we're going to gain consistency in the way our body moves and how we stay balanced throughout the entire swing. So one thing to kind of appreciate as we kind of look at just me standing on this pressure mat is a lot of people get the mistaken sense that they want to move their center of mass around, right? So that's me moving my body from side to side, or I'm going to shift my body weight back, shift my body into it. But actually the big thing is being able to move your center of pressure. So you see how fast I'm moving my center of pressure here. This is me moving my center of mass around, okay? Which is much less athletic and less powerful. Plus, my body's moving all over the place. How am I going to consistently return to the sweet spot every time? Think of like a running back in football, really able to cut and move and move back and forth side to side. We've got some motion this way. We've got some rotation that's happening. But that's what these elite level golfers really do so well. Okay, And we're going to talk about a couple different areas that I think are key factors in you developing a lot of distance. So the first thing to start, you'll watch as I go to take the golf club back, one of the first things that we see is we usually see a large pressure movement into the right side to start the backswing. And you can see as I go back there, my pressure moves into my right foot. The longest hitters usually do that early on. Like by the time they get to about left arm parallel, they've got almost their max pressure at that point. And we see a large spike in the very beginning. But if you watch closely, watch what I'm actually doing to accomplish this. You notice how I actually push off of my left foot. You see my center of, pre my center of pressure actually move left or towards my lead foot before it actually moves back towards my rear foot. So I'm getting some momentum by pushing off this left foot in order to get more pressure to load into my right foot. So there's many of you out there that are doing this, right? That's not very dynamic. We want to feel a little bit more of that as we go to start. So in order to start your backswing, what you'll feel, you might get into it, you're moving from side to side, you're feeling your feet interact with the ground. You might feel a little push off that lead leg to really spike the pressure movement into your right side. That's a great early factor in generating a lot of club head speed. Okay, so that would be step number one. Um, some people would call that a, a, a forward press or a trigger whatever you'd want to call it, but we really want to see that happening early into the right foot. The second thing that really helps us is understanding exactly what's occurring as we get into the hitting area. Okay, So there's many players that I teach that are trying to shift weight towards their lead side. And you can see what happens. The weight definitely goes towards the lead side, but my upper body ends up moving too far forward and I really don't have a lot of room to swing my arms through, nor do I have much rotation. There's some of you out there also that are trying to stay down as you hit the ball. That's another big limiting factor in getting, getting myself to use the ground properly to get this club head to accelerate faster. Okay, so what's actually happening to the best players, the ones that are really rotating and getting open the best, clearing their hips out, Dustin Johnson, Roy McElroy, Tiger, right? We see this large push from the lead side as they come through. You see how that translates as I get onto this pressure mat. We're seeing a lot of force going up and back. Okay, so the way I want you to envision this is in order for me to get my left hip, my lead hip to clear out of the way and my left shoulder to clear out of the way, there needs to be a large force this way. Like if I was just standing up against a wall and I pushed against that wall, you would see there'd be a rotational reaction that would pull my body backwards. And that's exactly what we want as we get into the impact area. So many golfers out there look like this coming in. Maybe they even look like this, but you can see the, the lead side of their body is not clearing out of the way. So on this, on this pressure mat, a couple things you'll see. In order for me to push off of my lead foot, you'll see a little spike again. You'll see a little pressure spike here before I push off. So it'll spike, push, spike, push, spike, push. That's the actual push that's driving my left shoulder up and around. 
that's pinning my left arm against my chest, that's helping me get my hands in front of the ball, that's helping accelerate the club head as I come through. And usually the best golfers, the ones that are hitting it the farthest, we see that actually work the fastest. Um, go ahead and put it on the center of pressure velocity. So we're gonna change screens here. So this next screen is my velocity. And go ahead and steady me again. So this is measuring the velocity of that white dot or that center of pressure, how fast it moves. So if I'm coming through and I'm doing this, you can see my velocity is not very fast, 391 degrees per second. What we're trying to get, we're trying to get a larger spike. So that was 500, 557. Let's see if we've got a little more. 595, okay? So there was a large burst of speed pushing off the ground and up in order to get me to clear out faster. Usually we'll see with, with uh, high level tour players, they're hitting 300 yards. This will be somewhere in the 700, 800 yard range. So I might need to work on that a little bit, okay? But back to what it feels like. Remember we gave you that analogy of pushing against a wall? Our foot is actually pushing against the ground in this fashion to push my hip back and to push my shoulder out of the way. So it's the opposite of what you would think. We want the hip to go this way. We're actually pushing off the ground that way. Just like I said, just like me pushing off a wall like this, that's actually what's gonna get this lead side to clear out. And that's what's gonna give us that, that position at impact that we all want of our arms extending and this lead hip, lead shoulder clearing up and out of the way, okay? So obviously I wouldn't start by going as fast as you can and trying to get that velocity really high. I would start with some small shots, just rehearsing that, that, little, that little timing of that push. Go ahead and go back to the original, the center pressure screen. And then uh, maybe let's steady it one more time. So I would start by just slowly feeling that little bump press. Bump press. So there's a little press to my left side, press, push off, press, push off. Okay, you might start off with just doing some little movements like I'm doing there, press, push. And then start hitting some small shots with that sensation. So I could feel the timing there and the timing's really important, right? It happens pretty quickly with this, this little press to my lead side. As soon as I feel pressure, now I've got something to push back up and off of, okay? That's happening at one and the same time that the club is swinging down and through on this golf shot, okay? We're not doing it from back here. We're not lifting up and swinging up on the ball. The club is for sure hitting down on it. It's just getting boosted by a lot more speed because of what my feet are doing with the ground. Okay, so those are two ways that you can really begin to change how you use the ground, but also, just more importantly, just really truly understand how we get power out of the ground. We really don't get power by moving our body side to side or what's happening up here. The power is coming from down here, right? So the better we can kind of get this exchange to happen more quickly and more athletically, the farther your ball's gonna go and you're gonna get more consistent because now it's gonna finally keep our upper body quiet. How many golfers do you see, and maybe you're one of them, with their upper body moving back and their upper body moving through and the club seems like it's swinging in slow motion. It's exactly what we don't want. We want to get the body moving athletically, but it really looks like I'm very centered and stable with my head and my sternum. That's the ultimate there. We're going to get the consistency from keeping our body still, but we're going to get the power from the ground from really understanding exactly what we need to do. Okay, so let's check out some real life footage of people doing this exact same thing. This first one's gonna be Kyle Berkshire. He just won the, the, the last national world long drive event and he's got club head speeds that are faster than anybody ever measured. They're in the 150s and ball speeds in the 220s. What I want you to do is watch what he, watch what he does to start his, his golf swing. He does this kind of rocking back and forth before he actually gets going. And it's giving him more momentum to really load that rear side up, okay? And obviously when he's doing it, he's long driving, his head's moving probably a little more than what we'd want on, a, on an eight iron, let's say. But notice how much power that's generating from the ground as he really gets things moving. 
you know, rather than, let's say, going away like this with no movement at all, no pressure shift. So he's really getting that trace to move early and hard and strong into that rear foot. Okay, so if you don't believe me, and you don't believe exactly what that left foot is trying to do as far as pushing this way, right? And that's pushing me around and out of the way so I can get better impact position. Watch some of these long drivers and watch how much they're jumping back. When they jump, they don't jump this way into the ball. They're all jumping away from the golf ball. Why? Because it's increasing that center of pressure velocity but it's also getting them to clear out that lead side as hard and as fast as possible. That's why you'll see certain iron players on tour, right? That they don't do it with an iron because really distance is not a premium, but then as they start getting into the longer clubs, you'll really see that, that backwards jump. Justin Thomas, Bubba Watson, Tiger does it, Patrick Reed does it. You'll see it in many different players if you watch closely with driver but they've got that, that left side timing of that push so hard to where it actually lifts their entire body up and off the ground. And that sends more energy out to the club head. Take a look. Everybody enjoyed that little lesson. If you want more stuff like this, I've got things that go out every week on an email list that's totally free, where we delve into other topics of hitting more greens, your ball striking, compression, shaft lean, your sequence of your downswing, shallowing the golf club. There's many topics that we touch on that you're not gonna get to see on YouTube alone. You need to get, you're gonna need to sign up for my email list. And you can do so just by clicking this link down here, and I'll see you in some of those emails.